it was a pre-recorded live, but if, yeah. So this is the mini Erica Bowler. I have printed out the pattern at 85% and it's so cute. Um, I do have a tutorial on this bag already. So if you want to see it made again or whatever, you can watch a different one. Um, I'm just really quick going through to make sure I've cut everything out because the last one I did, it didn't have everything cut out. So just going through really quick. Straps, connector, gusset, okay. So I need my slip pocket and my other zippered pocket piece. I also just want to say from the um, poll that I posted, um, I'm not showing favoritism in any way, shape, or form. The Erica is just easier, and I'm waiting for my cylinder arm to kind of tackle the other Marcel barrel bags that I've cut out. So, hi, Kaylee. How excited are we for red? I'm so ready. I'm ready. <laughs> okay. Um, so, I... I'm super excited. I got this from, why is there a bug in my face? What is that? <laughs> um, yes, Nancy. Thank you. Is it fuzz or just a fruit fly? Well, that was, <laughs> maybe I'm too tired to be live. I probably should have gone through that Nancy a little bit better. Um, but anyway, so I got this, um, pegboard from Ikea and set it up and I'm super excited to have this over here because I used to just keep them on my table and they'd always fall off so super stoked I also treated myself to some new rulers because they were all chipped and broken in the corners and I was fed up because I kept dropping them all right where's my pocket So this one that I use for pockets all the time, you can see the corners, they're so chipped from how many times we drop them. Ridiculous. 3D files for the pegboards. Oh yeah, that's true. Yeah, I know CJ made me a bobbin holder. I just, um, it's pretty cool. He made it with his resin printer. Oh, uh, hi Nick. Okay, so there is my zipper pocket. Okay, this freaking little fruit fly thing, gnat, whatever it is. Anyway, got my hardware from you. Oh, good, I'm so glad. <laughs> yeah, that's why I was at Ikea. I'm like, oh, I felt so bad. It was like way past Dorothy's bedtime, and I was like, can we please just go to Ikea? I want this, ugh, I want it hung up. Yes, Bobby, I can't wait. Um, yeah, I got the resin printer for CJ for Christmas. And then he really wanted the 3D printer. And I was like, absolutely not. And then I bought it for myself. <laughs> oh, Vanessa, that's so exciting. Okay, I don't know why I didn't get the non-slip Omni grid. I'm kind of mad at myself. But the numbers on this are so much different than the other one. This is crazy. Who am I? Whatever. I'll just cut it this big. Seven Erica's on the table. They're just so good. Do you guys want to see some bags that I've finished this week? Um, we, I just want to say we had a hardware restock. I don't, Quilter Secret Rulers. Ooh, send me a link because I need to check it out. Also, hi, Benny. I miss you. Um, do you know when you'll have zipper tape? Yes. So we have zipper tape ordered and 85%. Yes, zipper tape is ordered. I'm not 100% sure when it'll get here. Um, I'm so happy. We just hired another one of my friends. 
and I get to sew now. She She's replaced me as an order puller and I just get to sew and I wanna cry. I love it so much. Uh, I haven't seen those from Seems So Awesome. I actually really like, um, oh, a sew-in lining. So Jen actually has done a video making it like a drop-in lining. Um, so yeah, it's definitely doable, but I worked on some peekaboo beauty bags. All these vinyls are from my punk broidery, except this one. This one was one that I used to sell many, many moons ago. This one, this vinyl is from my punk broidery. I'm really tempted to keep this one, but I don't need it. But look at the midnight. Yeah. So I got to make those today. I got to make those. It was so good. Um, oop, oop. Sorry, we're doing great. So I finished this one earlier. Can we even? I love this one. Super cute. And then I did the tutorial for this one. You guys, this, this is the full size Erica and I did handles like on the Valora except they go all the way down. And then even on the strap, I added a little bit of slime. I love this bag. It's so cute. Um, more mini Erica's because I can't get enough. Uh, both of these vinyls are from So Hungry Hippie. Uh, this one I got a really long time ago. And then this one um, was just recently. And then this is another Peekaboo beauty bag with a vinyl from my punk broidery. Let's see what else we got. Um, these Marcel barrel bags, which you guys have seen, maybe, if you watched the video. Um, and then I finished this one. Um, my vinyl, I cut, like you could see the salvage on the vinyl, so I cut this little accent. It's really cute, but made the side so much thicker, I did not, I didn't think about that. And then I got these Vizzy backpacks done. Shut up, okay, shut up. This one's got a little strip of piping. Um, so this Vizzy backpack is such a fun little pattern. I love it. And it's convertible like from backpack to crossbody. Hi, Sarah. Um, and then I've gotten a lot of Devon wristlets finished. I don't think this was all this week, really, but they're just sitting here. So um, someone said spoon flower. Can we talk about spoon flower? Can you explain it? What was the question again? I'm going to open this really quick. And then I promise uh, the busy backpack is from Oliver Tree. No, Oliver Hart Creations. She has her pattern group. It's called the Treehouse, which is why I said that. Um, so I actually just got an order from Spoonflower for a custom bag that I need to make. Um, and I got the recycled canvas. This is actually a fabric that's coming eventually for you guys, but this is the print. So, Victoria. It's coming. <laughs> um, I still need to watch the video you sent me so I can get some inspiration, but probably next week I'll be making your bag. <laughs> Alex, you have my heart. <laughs> Thank you so much. Okay. All right, so my bag is cut out. I have a full water. Um, another thing I absolutely love about making this bag is that it just takes two D-rings and crossbody strap fabric. Like, it's so quick. 
And sometimes you just need like a low commitment bag. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't have been able to do a live on those because I'm up every 10 minutes making sure Dorothy doesn't put purse feet in her mouth. <laughs> I have seen the Liberty shoulder bag. Um, Carissa was so sweet and she sent me the pattern when she released it and I just haven't had a chance to sit down and do it. Um, it wasn't one that um, pulled me in right away, but I do wanna make it. Okay. But yeah, like I said, hardware restock happened. That's exciting. Oh, I need binding. Please hold. Yeah, the quick sew is the NCW. It is a quick sew. Um, so that cactus, it's actually a little ghost. It's a little ghost cactus. It's a ghost dressed up as a cactus. All right. We've got our stuff here. And then I'm gonna grab some zipper tape. I think I'm just, just, just gonna do black zipper tape. Just nice, simple. So sorry for the zipper pulls all over my floor. Air conditioner noise. Oh, work. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, Kiara, I haven't yet, but did I tell you I broke the needle? Oh, Alex, that's so stressful. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and start with the lining because I think white will look nice, but I don't want white thread for the rest of the bag. Um, and then I'll have to make some bobbins, so I do apologize. We really just dove in, didn't we? Hi Wanda, oh, thank you so much. I'm glad you could make it. I feel like it's really zoomed in, but I think it's just this new phone. New phone, who does? Same old me, drawing clips on the floor. Ah. Okay. So I'm gonna start by folding my lining pieces in half. Hello, Stephanie. Oh, batch sew in the pocket pals. I really want to make some that I couldn't get my machine to cut it out properly, so I just won't. <laughs> Whatever happened to your new camera? Um, so that was a really sweet gift and I appreciate it, but I'm, I'm not allowed to say lazy, but I like setting it up, figuring it out, getting a tripod for it, charging it, importing the video. Like my, my phone is just so much easier feel terrible and I also apologize because like it's lower quality for you guys not on the camera but there was no way <laughs> I know Ugh. and I appreciate that like it's that kind of talk negative self-talk isn't great um so Kelly, I don't have it yet, but I, oh, this zipper jig, I can try, but the problem is I watched his video. Probably should have done that before I bought it, but like, it's good to like line up your like, um, 
zipper panels. You have priorities for your energy. So well put. Um, but like I can't really use it. So if you were to like tape your zipper into place and then do it, you would love it. Um, but like to land, like what I was thinking, I can't do. But I will use it eventually. All right, let me iron my zipper. Sometimes these lives feel like, like when you go to an event or like a meeting, I should say, somewhere where your friends are and like you're supposed to be getting focused, but you haven't seen them in forever, so you just keep chatting. That's kind of what this feels like right now. So I do apologize. I do apologize for that. Uh, if I miss a question, I'm so sorry. Feel free to re-ask the question and I will do my best to read it out loud. Also, Alex, I did not know you were a Taylor Swift fan. And when I saw you share that, I was like, yeah. Um, so the mini Erica is just printed it out at 85%. And then you multiply any other measurements by 0.85. So like for the gusset and stuff like that, you just multiply. And I think they came out as weird numbers. Um, so I just rounded up. It's a good one. Have you ever done any videos on a domestic? Ish. Um, and I've thought about purchasing like one of the machines I used to have to do tutorials. But the thing is, I don't do tutorials as my income, if that makes sense. Like my job, that isn't my job. It, I mean, it's part of my job and people might roll their eyes at that, but I can't do that to myself. I feel like I've, I've paid my dues. I did the domestic bags and I can't do it again. So much cursing, so much crying. Your tutorials end up bags you sell. Yeah. So basically how I started tutorials was just making the bags that I sell, but doing it live so I could show other people things that I've learned. So I really wish that I could. And I know that if I did, it would get me more views or more subscribers or whatever, but I just, I have to put my energy elsewhere. <laughs> um, but yeah, I've thought about it, but I do have some tutorials making bags on this smaller machine. Um, how to get your materials in Kenya. I have no idea. I, I don't shop in Kenya, so I do apologize. I ship internationally. Um, but I know that shipping is pricey. Uh, what would you say is the best thing about moving to an industrial if a domestic involved cursing and crying? A, a shorter amount of time cursing and crying. Um, but I was actually looking through old photos and there was one of me in my old room like looking at this machine like... <laughs> because they are tricky. Um, Benny, no, I have these. It's a um, metal machine, so I have these magnets that are magnetic. Aw, hi, Jess. And that's why I started going live, was so that I wasn't alone when I was sewing. All right, I'm going to go iron this. Yeah, so I would love to be the one to show you how to make bags on a domestic, but that machine or that video would involve me throwing a domestic into the trash 
and ordering an industrial, which isn't to say that you can't make bags on a domestic. It can be done. Lots of people do it, but it ain't me. I can't go back. I can't go back. I can't go back. I'm about to have like some PTSD. Um, I did the Hollywog ID badge from Needle and Anchor Supply Co. on that machine. I did the marsupial back or hip bag on that machine and one of the Emily bag videos is on that machine. I just make it, I just use it to make zipper pouches. That's, that's that. I sew everything on domestics, but I've been itching for an industrial, just can't decide, swaying towards the 1541. Um, I have not made the H2 to go, so I unfortunately do not have any tips, but I know within the Lynn's pattern group, there are tons of hacks for that bag. Kira and Alex, I feel like you guys can work together on links. <laughs> And I love it. You're both so fast. Um, but yeah, I definitely don't want to glamorize having an industrial machine because it is hard work. There is a lot to it and getting it right. Yeah, I don't want Kat to miss the sale either. Um, yes, the pink machine behind me is a chain stitch machine. And if you search through my videos for that exact sentence, the pink machine behind you, um, you will see it in action. Oh, Pierre, I'm so excited. When do you get your new tech cylinder arm? I have an artisan and... Oh, I'm so sorry, Katrina. Um, I don't know when I get it, but I'm very excited to get it. Do you have a tutorial on pattern cutout for the Emily? I'm 40% sure there's one somewhere. Yeah, so if you're debating on an industrial and you don't have any background, I would say try a cylinder arm. Um, because it's got everything you're going to need. I hear you mention FM stores. I live about five hours away. This is going to be with binding. Okay, so I'm working on the slip pocket. I'm just folding over that top edge. I've made this way longer than I need to be, but whatever. I will trim it down. Trim it down. All right, I'm gonna use some double-sided tape along the bottom edge, even though this one from Wizardry doesn't stick well to waterproof canvas. Do I have, I don't think I have a slim one from Wolf Black. Are you live oh yay kathleen happy to help i know i the last few nights i've just kind of laid in bed taken a melatonin and just vegged but i'm like i have one more mini erica to finish i'm super excited um that and i'll be out of town this week so i want to get it done the show that I'm preparing for is called the Geek Craft Expo, and it's going to be in St. Louis, July 23rd. I know, I saw your message, Ben. Benny, sorry. Um, at, let, let me know the dates, and I'll see if we can make it work. Make it work. Um, I see a lot of people that really like the Sailrite machines. I know someone emailed me to kind of 
warned me about Texo and the experience that they had, um, which I super appreciate. But I've heard more good than bad, so I just, I don't know. Following my heart. That is so weird. Mika Bella. I, so these are actually from Fomore, these here, but my tulip, I didn't have that issue, so I'm so sorry. I feel awful for su suggesting it, and so many people have had issues. All right, I'm laying my slip pocket into place, facing around the side edges, and then I'm gonna sew along the bottom. And as I get to that center, I'm gonna flip up, back stitch. I'm gonna make a few lines of stitching across. And I'm gonna come back down. So yeah, there's a lot of excess slip pocket happening here. That's okay. So I'm going to go ahead and switch to black thread. I'm going to make some bobbins really quick. I'm bringing all of my sharp things to Dragon Con for sharpening. Nice. Oh, good old Dragon Con. Um, yeah, absolutely, Robert. I would love to show the difference. Someone asked about the sale, right? I have the fabricator deluxe and absolutely love it. I love that you can be winding a bobbin while you're sewing. <sighs> Ambish Geek has a pre-order for wholesale pricing on hardware. Cool. Uh, any quilt shops in St. Louis I should plan for? It? Not that I know of, honestly. There's Jackman's, but it's fine. Uh, there is one in... Um, it's Warm and Cozy Quilt Shop in, starts with a C, L if I know. Columbia, did it, I did it. Oh, Missouri Star Quilting, I think that's further out than St. Louis. So this machine can wind bobbins while sewing, but I don't trust it. Anytime I've done it, I just waste a bobbin. So I'd rather spend three minutes making bobbins versus 10 minutes trying to figure out why it's not working correctly. The lamp I have on my table is um, called the Daylight Lamp. This one I actually got from Mass Drop a long time ago, and the one I have on this table over here is from Amazon. It's way better. Um, but I do have links for that on, on my website under My Favorite Things, um, and I'll be sure to include that in these links. bobbins ready to go. I will look at comments in just a second. Just going to thread this machine really quick. Alrighty. 
unload that bobbin. I watch your videos after a rough day of dealing with my domestic to calm me down. Oh. Oh, man. Hi, Cindy. 85%. Um, and then you multiply the gusset measurements by 0.85. Like magic, yeah. Hi, Bianca. I did notice with these dull snips that there seemed to be a gap between the blades. That's very possible. I made a zipper jig from an old fork. Oh, I love that. Okay, so this is the lamp from Amazon. Watch. So that's one, two, three, and then four, and then off. Like the light is super bright. I can see my future with this thing. I don't know why I don't have it on the other machine and I've thought about buying a new one, but I'm like, this one still works. Um, but the bulb comes loose. This one honestly feels sturdier. I don't know, thicker, but that one feels nicer. I don't know. Um, someone asked if I do custom orders. Eh. <laughs> um, I definitely used to do more and lately I've just been like, like that Danny DeVito meme where he's like, I just don't have the mental energy for them some most times. Um, but if you send me an email when I am mentally ready, I will respond. Uh, Victoria, I am excited for yours, though. <laughs> What's the lamp name you like? Um, it's just the Daylight Lamp from Amazon. Um, we'll include a link. Uh, lately, any links are usually on the video within 24 hours. When you first got the 1181, were you scared? Oh, absolutely. Yes. Yes. Uh, I would say it took me a good month of sewing almost all day every day to really get used to this machine. Um, and even then it was a while before like we really found our rhythm. But again, there was no one for me to watch or ask questions in a group about things. Um, I just my friend Dana helped me quite a bit, but she didn't have this machine. She just knew more about industrials than I did. Um, so yeah, there's definitely help out there. Buy a machine from a reputable place. I bought mine off of Amazon, not reputable. Well, Amazon's reputable, but the seller, I have no idea who it was. I can't contact them for support, so. Those are my warnings about buying an industrial machine. The two places that I recommend, others may have different sources, um, but if you're in the US, there's Sunny Sewing in Dallas, Texas, and then there's Steve at Sewing Gold. Um, and I've met Steve personally. He's located in Chicago, so I probably would have purchased my machine from him since I'm only four or five hours from Chicago. Okay. Hopefully that helps. I'll take you over to the ironing board. I just changed from a domestic to a Genomi HD9. Very cool. Yeah, don't order from Gold Star Tool. <laughs> feel like I have to say it in every video. If you have a good experience, awesome. If not, that is understandable. <laughs> Some people have machines from him and love them. Some people hate them. So it just, I don't know. I will say that I had never 
recommended machines from him. And if I did, show me the video and I take it back. <laughs> Um, I have been having trouble with stitching on some things, yeah. Oh no, Stephanie, you don't like your HD9? I'd love to hear, like, what? I've thought about buying one, but again, I just... I love my machine, but the customer service is awful, yeah. Hi, Brittany. Okay, so I am just massaging this seam back and forth. Heating it up will kind of help, especially with that waterproof canvas, it is thick. Where did you find that fabric? Um, this one is my design. I mean, that's kind of weird to say, but a customer wanted a kimono with these images on it, so we collaged it and she gave me her blessing to use it on other things. So technically I designed it. It may be operator error. Oh no. Sending a hug regardless. Oh, just started sewing four months ago and I already have a Texo 140. Very cool. I don't know much about Texo machines, but I'm excited to learn about the 4800 Pro. It feels like, okay, so CJ, my husband, just bought a Tesla and it almost feels like a Tesla version of a machine. So I was like, will you get that? I'm gonna get this. And we bought Dorothy a new teether. She's fine. stitching around that whole pocket. Um, I will say I've changed up the construction of this bag quite a bit from the original pattern. So if something seems confusing or off, that's why. But the original pattern instructions are wonderful, especially if you have a domestic. Um, she's very conscious. Consci conscious conscious um, of interfacing and where it's placed and where the bulk is on your bag and stuff like that so all of Aura Rosa patterns are incredible <laughs> I might be moving <laughs> more towards the T there oh, outstanding So I'm just trimming off the excess. I just rough cut the lining for those big pockets. So. Okay, so then I fold these in half, find the center. Hi, Noreen, oh, thank you. Oh, Kathleen, I'm so glad that the bow looked cute. <laughs> Kira, sounds like I'm getting one of those after I get my Tesla. What kind of thread do I use? Um, I use Amon thread from Sunny Sewing, but I'm pretty sure you can get it other places too. All right, so I have my straps cut to three inches wide by 24 inches long. And this is just so that I can use the ruler. I think originally I had them cut to like 21 inches, which worked fine too. Um, oh, did anyone buy the fairy floss from Wizardry? The like pastel one, because it shreds a little bit in my machine and I'm just wondering if I just, needed to change my needle or if you guys have had issues too 
I still love the thread. It's gorgeous. It's everything I ever wanted. Oh, uh, Vanessa says the HD9, she hasn't tried vinyl with it, but it handles cork and this seems better. Hi, Lauren. New to lives. Hi, Susie. I didn't have issues. Okay, good. Hi, Angie. Cindy, no issues. Kaylee said Jess at Oakley Root seemed to have issues on her industrial with the thread. I'm sorry. Let me read it again. My eyes are tired. With it. Okay, with the machine. With the thread. With the thread. Yeah, I haven't watched that. I wish that I could go over to her house and help her, though. I wish I could do that for all of you. Hit me in the head. Rude. Okay. With the leather bucket, you think it was the needle? Yeah, I had that, I've had that issues before, too. Like, if you don't have that needle in just right, or if the needle's too thick, they're so finicky. And that's why, like, I try to tell you guys what I'm using in this machine as often as possible. And it's always size 19 needles. <laughs> Why? Why? They're just so perfect. They're the Goldilocks of needles, I'm telling you. They're just right. Oh, Inga, someday. Ugh. I wish I could help. Hi, Diana. Juki Junkies has excellent customer service and sells industrials. Awesome. All right, so I'm just gonna fold these in half and sew them like a strap. Uh, the vinyl that I'm using is from So Hungry Hippie. This is the black moon dust. Black, I think, I think it was the moon dust. But I'm pretty sure this is the same material that 31 tote bags are made out of or something. My mom has one and I felt it and it feels just like this. So, it must be good. Cause she sticks like two bowling bowls, bowling bowls in her bag, bowling bags. Okay, okay. How are you liking your new wallet? I love it so much, I love it. <laughs> what did Ben and Connor get? Cindy, that's an excellent question. They got their food bowls combined because Dorothy keeps running into them and picking up two is a lot harder than picking up one. Um, I should really buy them some new tacos. I am loving that bag from Willow and Luna. I seem to have issues when I use size 19, so I just keep using 21. That's crazy. That's crazy. Well, I, I don't know. Not all industrials are made the same, I guess. for 19s my husband came home with 18s I wonder if it's just weird I don't know uh what pattern is the new bag I got I think it's one from blue Cala, but I know that um Erin kind of plays with the patterns kind of like me so she makes it 
easier for her. Like she has one that's basically the Brooklyn handbag, but she's like changed it up. It's so cute. She's a creative little genius, that Erin. Okay, so I don't have any interfacing on these main panels. I find that the binding just gives the bag so much body that it's really not necessary. So that's one reason I love making this bag. It's so quick with these changes. So I'm going three inches up from the bottom. Got some double-sided tape here. And then two inches from the side. Um, I don't switch needles ever. I change my needle. But yeah. Alright, and then I'm making a mark six inches up from that handle placement to sew them down. I just realized you can't see anything I just said. Okay. So again, finding my center three inches up. Okay. What company is Erin? Willow and Luna. Um, she just makes handbags. She doesn't do patterns. She doesn't sell patterns, I should say, or anything like that. Um, man, how many bags for a show? It really just depends on how I'm feeling. I think the best I ever did was like 102 bags, and that was for C2E2 this past year. Yeah? I was pregnant? Yeah. Oh. So many mini backpacks. I still have some of them too. It's kind of a bummer. Uh, yes, I would love to see your mods on the Lauren bag. And anybody feel free to do videos on my patterns and let me know, I'd love to share them. Oh, Deborah purchased from Sunny Sewing Machine and the name came up in conversation. I am sure. Watching as I paint a door, that sounds fun. All right, so I'm gonna sew these on. I don't use the same method, but you totally could. It's just a lot. And again, it's such a small bag. So I charge 105 for the mini Erica because it's so quick. And then I charge like 135 for the bigger one. by One Direction stuck in my head. I'm like, I'm not upset about it or anything, but Harry Styles is like yelling in my head right now. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. 
catching up on comments. Does Erin have a YouTube channel? No, she does not. I wish. Uh, what does that come out to in a dollar amount total bags for a show? I mean, uh, I really, I don't know. I don't ever have a set plan because I sell clothing and like zipper pouches and stuff too. Um, I just like to have a good assortment of bags for people to choose from. Um, I really need to make some Emily totes. I had a custom order for one and I was like, man, I miss making this bag. I just hate sitting here on my YouTube channel, like making my own patterns. What is wrong with me? I don't know. Like, I want to also show support for other designers, so. That, and like, I've made probably a hundred Lauren, not Lauren, Emily totes in my lifetime, if not more, easily more. But, quick and easy. And they hold a lot of stuff. <laughs> yes, but we love it. <laughs> Alrighty. I'm super excited to make a Charlotte tote. Super excited. Alright, let's go ahead and rivet these. Lauren, would you ever do a video on the patterns that you've seen? Yours and others and show bags as you go. I'm not quite sure what you mean. Am I doing Dragon Con this year? No. I don't believe I'll be returning to Dragon Con ever. We'll see, but probably not. Um, I like Dragon Con. I just am tired. I've been doing cons for like six, five or six years. And it's just so much travel. It's so much work. It's so much smiling. And I just can't. I think Dragon Con is like a seven hour drive. Yeah, the pattern chat, that's kind of what I was thinking they meant. And I know I need to do more. Oh, thank you, Sheila. She says she loves the Emily tote. I love it too. So much smiling, I hear you, yeah. There was apparently some drama with Dragon Con. I feel like there's always drama with Dragon Con. And what's sad is I've, I've never been to the Marriott. <laughs> so like when I get, when I go to cons, I don't get to walk around very often. You're not wrong about cons, but I'm so ready to go back to doing conventions after the last year and a half. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think just with Dorothy, it's it would be a lot. So maybe when she's older, I would consider going back to doing conventions. Oh, there's now another one. Oh, it's so hot. It's so hot. Yeah. Uh, like a review of on her favorite patterns. Okay. It would be so hard. I'd feel so terrible picking. That's like, who's your favorite child? That's why I only have one. <laughs> um, I do have a video going through bags that I've made that are in my closet. So that might be a fun one for you to watch. Cause if I'm carrying it, it's probably my favorite. What are you wearing? I mean that like whose bag are you wearing? All right, so I'm lining up my center snips. And then uh, before I baste the layers together, I'm gonna grab my lining. Yes, I'm sorry, so not seeing, no, that's okay, that's okay, typos happen. I'm sorry I misunderstood. Um, yeah, that would be fun. Some of my favorite bags that I've sewn. I love the video of your old bags. Yay. What is the difference between the two tools you just used? What, what did I use? Oh, the, um, yes. 
the rivet presses. Uh, they're the same rivet press. One just punches holes, one sets the rivets so that I don't have to change the dies. The everyday tote I made, the strap broke. Oh, and now I've learned to sew the straps on as well as rivet. Yep, I can't. Totes that just have the straps riveted on scare me. <coughs> Hi, Camilla. Camilla. Um, this is double-sided tape from Waywack or leather tape. <coughs> I can't even drink water. All right. Um, so the Warm and Cozy Quilt Shop in Columbia, Illinois, they actually asked if I would like to do classes with them. And I think I'm gonna do one coming up. Um, but I'm just gonna do the Peekaboo Beauty Bag as like a prep for the So Magical Expo. I can make that bag in my sleep but after my last teaching experience in person, I just need like an easy win to know that I can do it. So I think, I think we're gonna do that. Just do like one afternoon of peekaboo beauty bags coming up. Just need an easy win. All right. For some reason, I always like to put the zipper pocket on the back of the bag. So the nameplate is the front, has the slip pocket. And then this one is just gonna get that zippered pocket. unzip my zipper pocket a little bit <laughs> you are already winning I know like I can do this there's no actual person sitting here looking at me going I don't want to do this probably would have been done by now if I hadn't been talking so much. I do apologize. Don't cut the strap. So then I'm just going to kind of like trim off any excess. If you cut yours out perfectly, you probably won't have excess. Um, I reduced the bag by a percentage. Oh, to show when I teach? Yeah. Um, I think there's they may be able to do that at So Magical Expo, or maybe I'll have CJ record it. Um, CJ is starting a YouTube channel. He needs to do the videos. He bought like a fancy GoPro and stuff like that to film. He hasn't quite gotten there yet. It's fine. He will. So maybe I'll have him film it. Or maybe I'll just wear the GoPro and teach him. All right, so my front panels are done. I'm gonna go ahead and work on the um, straps here. Um, it's called the Tesla Foodie, but I don't think it's searchable yet. He had to send me the link directly. Um, but yeah, hopefully this next week he'll upload. Or maybe I'll edit the video for him tomorrow night. He's just so nervous. <laughs> it's... Um, if you guys watch any of my old videos, sometimes I watch my old videos just to get a sense for it. And like some of the YouTube ones, I'm so cringy. I'm just like, hi guys. No, no. 
Oh no. Yeah, I was like, dude, you're gonna have so many subscribers already. Upload. Yeah, it can be, it can be nerve wracking for sure. But basically he wants to go places in the Tesla and eat, not in the Tesla, and then talk about the restaurant he ate at. So it's like diners, dives, and drives. I don't know, what is that show? Drives, diners, diners, drives, and dives. Now they're not even words. So there's that. All right zipper panel. Let's go. Can you send me the link? Yes. Diner drive-ins and dives and Teslas <laughs> in the Tesla. Okay. Let's, let's think Teslas. So if Tesla's the drive truck stops, Toasted raviolis and Teslas. Oh, that's the wrong time. <laughs> Food, Tesla, and CJ. <laughs> yeah. The Tesla honestly kind of makes me car sick. I like my Toyota Sienna the best. Because I'm a mom. Oh, hi, Joannes. <laughs> hi, Pamela. Go get beer, truck stops, taps, and oops. <laughs> Please tell us what you're using for the sticky tape. Um, I am using this to hold my zipper in place. So this is kind of like if you were to baste the zipper. Um, and that sticky tape is from Wizardry Stitchery Crafts, but it's also just double-sided tape. You could get it from waywack.com. Um, it's just an eighth of an inch wide. And why I'm using it instead of basting the zipper, I saw Nikki do it. And I was like, well, if Nikki bastes her zipper in place using tape, then I need to too. Her bags are impeccable. All right, did not make my zipper quite long enough. There we go. Um, so I like to cut my gusset piece bigger than needed for the lining instead of like precisely cutting it so you can see the lining is bigger yeah it does it helps the zipper not get wavy i agree um so then i'm just going to press this down using my iron You can see there's an overhang there of that lining, but that's okay. We're gonna trim it down after we baste it all together. I'm just peeling off the tape and then I'm lining up my zipper panels. lining piece into place. Well, how about that? Do you have any tips for getting the sewing magnets onto a domestic machine? Mine is all plastic and I don't know how to get it on there. Um, I saw someone that used painter's tape to tape a magnet on the machine and then put the magnet on that magnet. But 
That's up to you. You can also put it on like a light that's nearby. Um, Springfield anytime soon? Probably not. Um, I don't think it's on the way. You could add super glue to add a magnet. That's true. I just hate to do something that permanent. No, sadly, there just isn't going to be time. Um, probably lots of trips to Kansas City, but not to Springfield. All of that together I'm gonna baste all the way around and add my strap connectors would like to go though. I need black. I just, I need black vinyl. I just don't need any, uh, <sighs> uh this hoodie is from Aerie a while ago. It was just a white one and then me and some friends tie dyed one day. It's fun. Okay. Last pieces. I still have to make the crossbody strap though. But that's okay, we'll get there. Okay. Um, so this gusset piece is like 23.75 inches by four and a half, I think. And I believe that measurement is kind of increased. I don't know. Foam between the magnets. well do bags especially the ones over a hundred dollars you usually sell at conventions i i am using the light gray waterproof canvas i love that you can read comments and talk while making a bag i just sewed my shirt into the bag by now it's hard um i think that having a very diverse price pricing range helps um like i sell a lot of canvas totes i sell a lot of like vinyl totes you can look at my website to see the different bags that i have um lots of zipper pouches so there's like a ten dollar range there's a forty dollar range and then there's the higher price range so i feel like people who have purchased other items come back to purchase more expensive items um but that really just depends and like i said i've been doing cons for five years 
so the ones that I continually go to, I've built a reputation. I don't know, that sounds a little too hoity-toity for me, but, you know, people are looking and budgeting to spend that much money, so... Having that range of pricing definitely helps. And that's why I try to make some smaller bags, some bigger bags, some flashier bags, some more toned down bags. Like this one's just all black vinyl and then nickel hardware, a nice toned down bag. You build up clientele by word of mouth. Yeah, that can definitely play a role as well. I will sleep so much better having made this bag and hanging out with you guys. You all. <laughs> you built the clientele. I did. <clears throat> And then I'm just going to baste the whole side press it together. My nose is so itchy. I didn't use any interfacing in the gusset. Sometimes I do, um, but sometimes like the bag just, with that waterproof canvas binding, man. Sturdy. I need to make that Erica. Do you multiply the size of the zipper by the percentage that you shrunk it down to? Uh, pretty much, pretty much. Hi. How are you, Madeline? Are you having the most fun ever on your journey? Uh, am I still using the leather, Sarah? I actually, uh, one of the straps broke, but I fixed it and I was gonna use it but then I didn't for some reason. Oh yeah, I've got my Willow and Luna, but I do love that bag. I need to make that pattern. Ooh. Good, good. the gusset. I've got the clips here. Has been a lot of fun. I bet. Memories for sure, but also like, let's get back to sewing. <laughs> I would feel that way. I'd be like, okay, this is great, but can I, you know, get back to sewing. I mostly am joking. Like, sewing isn't everything okay there's my center there's my center I haven't worked with black vinyl in what feels like a very long time just because I haven't had it I hope I have not forgotten how to use an industrial. Uh, 
I'm so excited for the cylinder arm. Gussets and binding are gonna be so quick and easy. Hopefully, if I can get that machine to work for me. I think if Pierre can do it, I can do it. You guys want me to change the camera angle for the side panels and binding? Yeah, I think we should. Hi, Mary. Uh, making it at 85%. Um, what grade of vinyl? That's a really good question. I have no idea. Yeah, with the black and white. I think it looks good. Something nice and neutral. All right. Mm. Taking a hydrate break. All right, stitch length down to four and a half. I just got my first piece of leather. No idea what a good pattern would be for the first time with leather. Mm -hmm. Man, I, I don't know. Probably just like a simple tote. Maybe use it as accent on something just to kind of get a feel for it. And then any parts that are out a bit wider here, you can trim down. You don't want to trim it down too far, but you don't want it to be sticking out way too much either. Just do a little trim. And then I've got my waterproof canvas binding. This is a hack. The binding is a hack from Lynn's Handmade Patterns. And you could attach both sides of the bag before binding if you wanted to, but I really love that once I'm done, I'm done. So, just a thought. But if you are worried about it, you could wait until you're done sewing the main panels on and then switch over to that like lighter colored thread if you wanted to. I don't think it's going to be that big of an issue. I've gotten pretty good at waterproof canvas binding. Every once in a while I'll miss a little spot but not often. waterproof canvas colors are thicker than others so I know someone asked like are there any tricks to working with waterproof canvas and that's definitely something to note uh, like the light pink is thinner 
this silver color is thinner, a little bit more flexible to work with. Uh, this binding is just straight. Is there a standalone tutorial somewhere for waterproof canvas binding? Not really. You just fold it over. Definitely easier than bias tape, yeah. The waterproof canvas isn't going to fray unless it's cut weird. Um, so that's why you just you just have the raw edge. That and it would be so thick. And this definitely isn't a method that's for everybody. I know some people don't even really like waterproof canvas. Um, so definitely stick with regular binding if that's what you're used to and you know. this angle of the camera as well. I think it's really easy to see things. Um, I wish that I had like two cameras. Uh, faux works well too. Nice. Did I not find the center on both sides? Where'd you go? I guess not. Who am I? Is there center? Yeah, there's a center down here. Okay. All right, all right, move along. Yeah, I think because I've never done traditional binding, bias binding, um, I, I don't appreciate it. <laughs> I don't like it. But I'm also someone who likes a little bit more instant gratification. So I feel like spending that much time on something would really frustrate me. Unless I had, you know, I don't know, I haven't done it and... I've got it stuck in my mind that I don't like it, so that's not going to help me change my mind at all. Now is it? No, waterproof canvas binding does not need to be cut on the bias because there is no stretch to it. Um, but like Alex mentioned, there is, you can use fold over elastic and there's plenty of stretch there. <laughs> do you ever make mistakes? I do make mistakes. Sometimes I have to use the seam ripper for actually seam ripping, but other times I figure out how to make them work or I throw away. But yeah, I have no doubt that there have been mistakes made on lives or in tutorials, and I just kind of roll with it.
see too many large areas. If you ever hear Lauren say it's fine, she's rolling with it. It's a mistake. Sorry. Yeah, check my battery. Okay, are we back? Are we back? Okay. It's in, yeah, we're back. Sorry, low power mode. I'm at 20%. They need to make, and they might now. Um, I got like a MagSafe phone. I got the new Pro Max, whatever. Um, but I think they need to make a tripod that charges your phone. All right, we're back. Cool. Thanks. Thanks. Appreciate you all. Oh, also, pro tip for anyone who makes a lot of bags. Um, the waterproof canvas, when cut on the width of the fabric, so that's 60 inches, if you're making mini Erica's, what's left over can go on the Marcel barrel bag as far as binding. That, like, little extra piece. With the normal size bowler, I have to throw away that little tail. There's like n nothing I can think of that it can be used for. But for this size, the Marcel. Oh, the binding scared you. Yeah, I absolutely get that. A lot of bags with binding. And I think that's one reason I didn't do a lot of Ororosa bags until the Linsport backpack that introduced this to me. I was like, oh, okay, well, I could just do that for any bag with binding. Great. However, with waterproof canvas, like it, it does get very thick. And it almost gives this bag like a spine. And Robert, if you're still watching, I do still plan on showing the 85% compared to the 100%. I'm not sure if you're... Robert, are you with us? Are you still with us? Uh, Lori asks, why do I angle the ends of the binding? To lessen the bulk, but honestly, it's part of the Linsport pattern, and now I can't not do it. Hi, Crystal. How's it going? Yeah, so the ends nest. Ah, oh, Brittany printing the Valora bag. Oh, I'm so happy. I love that bag pattern and the little girl it was named after. <sighs> However, I don't love the typos that change it to Valero, <laughs> like the gas station. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. Here we go. After this, I have to make a crossbody strap. I should have done it first, but I didn't. So there's the binding and you can trim down that excess if you want, but I'm not going to. 
Yeah, I mean, I'd been using the Tulip Pinks without issue, um, but purchased some of the Fomore because I have been meaning to. And I, I met them at Dragon Con, actually. And they mentioned working with me for something, but it didn't happen. We didn't follow up. And I'm not the kind of person that's like, what are we doing? Oh no, is it frozen again? No. It shouldn't be. But we're almost done. I might make the crossbody strap off camera just in case, but I think we'll be okay. All right, so now I'm birthing the bag. I always use my body as leverage. Do I sew for Dorothy? Um, I have made some clothes, but they take so much time and they don't fit her for very long that I'm just like, meh, I'll just buy clothes. And you just kind of gently massage the binding into the seam. And like once the bag's full of stuff, it'll definitely help. like the bag pops to life so I mean it's definitely on the little side I just think it's so cute hi girth so yeah uh, let's go ahead let's just make the crossbody sharp really quick I feel like I didn't finish it then Kira, are you still here? Kira, are you with us? Um, if so, how is your iron holding up? Mine's doing great. It's a little squeaky. Hi, Garth or Shelby. That's a good. That's a good point. And or both. How is your iron holding up if you got a replacement? Oh, she's finishing her swab. Okay. Guard. Sound like a cat? You're going to bed? Yeah. Okay, what time is it? Yeah, it's 2.18. Okay, I'll be up really soon. Like, less than 10 minutes. Yeah. <sighs> Everyone's asking about your channel.
It's on you right now. I'm kidding. The video. I was kidding though. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> what is this channel about? What did we say? T wraps, truck stop, T wraps, and Tesla. No, I'm just kidding. Hi, Dylan. Colt, listen to your mother. She's right. She's always right. Panic, of course. And his debut on YouTube is sewing. Uh, David, yes, you can send the baggies back to that same mailing address. That would be amazing. We will reuse them. And I think my favorite is when people mail them back in one of my mailers. I'm like, yes, save that landfill from a little more waste. Tesla's taverns and truck stops. Ooh, that's a fun one. <laughs> it's just the Tesla foodie though. And he was like, I should have like an intro or like a logo. And our friend David does really fun illustrations. He helped with my intro and stuff. Um, and I was like, oh, like a Tesla eating a cheeseburger. And he's like, that's really good. <laughs> Yeah, so his plan is to travel places in the Tesla and eat food. Yes, to make the cubes. I need to make a cube. Maybe the next time I get a mailer back, I'll make a cube. All right. Almost there. I've also seen zipper pouches. I think someone made a wallet out of it. You guys, stop it. I want to have, I don't have the energy, but I want to do it. Like a contest. <laughs> For turning your bubble mailers into something. Super fun. All right. Oh, hi, Diana. We want to see the snacks. I too like food, right? It'd be fun. Okay. That bag is completed. Now we will see the full size. a tote bag out of an Amazon bubble mailer. Outstanding. Whoa, Put the bin away. They get stock in their company in the evaluations. That's incredible. Hmm. I love 
refilling the project bin area. Gotta go lower. Oop, gotta go lower. All right, size comparison time. Let's see here. There's my calendar. Okay, so you can kind of see the mini compared to the larger size there. So sorry, we'll be professional someday. Um, so there's bottom to bottom. good for big things and this one would be good for small things and that's my review thanks for coming to my channel <sighs> I don't know it's a good one but it's big <laughs> I did put the label on um, and here is that ghost cactus fabric I'm having it printed on a sample of glow-in-the-dark fabric like how fun <laughs> I like this way more <laughs> yeah um okay is there anything else <laughs> that we need to go over do we all understand the concept of big and small Mm. Okay. Um. Oh no, I'm sorry, Sandra. Perfect size. It's perfect size. The the original one was great too, but who doesn't love changing things up? Um, okay. <laughs> yes, Brady, I'm so sorry. Yes, watch the replay. I'm thinking of making a Maxi Erica for my laptop. Oh, yes. That would be super cool. I know, right? Both are good. There is no better. Both are good. I like to keep that mindset for a lot of things. Links when I wake up. What a dream. It's like I, I gathered them in my sleep, except I didn't. It was completely Alex. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Good night, everybody. Thank you so much for hanging out. And I will see you next week sometime. Ben, come here. Okay, bye.